evening, I'd taken two strong doses of uh, ayahuasca because the first hadn't really kicked in and then I took another one. Have you done that? Oh yeah, yeah. So hey, it's not working, and then you and then you double up, and then you're going, whoa! It's all hitting at the same time. And uh, so, in the Buddhist tradition, they talk about uh, everyone has Buddha nature, and it's just a matter of not really realizing your own already enlightened state. And so I thought. Well, what a perfect circumstance to get in touch with your already enlightened state would be through the ayahuasca experience. And so I sat up and started my kind of uh, meditative, uh, you know, position. And I thought, well, I'll just be Buddha you know, be my own kind of Buddha being. And so I did that for a couple minutes and I was feeling like my mind just expand and extend out through the whole web of life. And uh, this was the jungle, you know, so it was very fertile and chirping and, and lots of animals and all the flora and fauna and extending out through the cities and somehow you know the mind is able to extend and expand out through through all these beings so there was a tremendous wonderful expansion of interconnectedness with everything and then there was this wave coming back of the suffering and the pain of all beings, you know, and this, whoa, you know, like, oh my God, I, you know, so that's why not everybody is doing the Buddha thing. It's like, because you're opening yourself up to all of the suffering, because you're being the beings, and remember the first noble truth, truth of suffering, so, so it was all coming home to me, and that was, a lot of, it's like a, being a pain magnet. And then there was another outflowing of, well, what do you meet that with? You meet that with the ocean of compassion that you are. And so then there was a, then a wash back of, of uh, compassionate bodhisattvic love, you know, that was going out through this great web. It was amazing, you know, like, kind of give and take of, of this uh, energy. And in the middle of that, then uh, I, there was a kind of taunting voice in the back of my mind that was saying, oh, you're such a good Buddha. Oh, look at Mr. Enlightenment there. Oh, isn't he enlightened, you know? And it, think of how wonderful he is. He didn't even call his wife and daughter today. Now, did he? He promised he'd call them. Now, but Mr. Enlightenment doesn't have time for his own wife and daughter, now does he? And uh, so it was like from, from this kind of sense of, of interconnectedness with everything and this enlightened state, I, you know, I went careening down into uh, puking all over myself. And it's just because I had taken a double dose, I was completely unable to get up and clean myself or anything. So it was, it was a, um, a very humbling uh, taste of, of Buddhahood mixed with a, uh, a swimming in a, uh, the swill of my own vomit. I think <laughs> that that kind of covers the the spectrum that you can get out of an ayahuasca experience. I think ayahuasca can show us how beautiful we are inside and what kinds of possibilities we have for love and for actions of kindness. One of the great assets of ayahuasca is that it's plants. And, you know, what better way to root ourselves back into the web of nature and a 
compassion for this web of life than through the plants themselves. You know, the plants are talking to us. We need to listen. Gnosis. Gnosis.